Hi students, welcome to Uma Science Guru. Students, do you know the important sense organ in our body? Eye is the one of the most important sense organ. With the help of eyes, we are able to appreciate visually whatever is happening in front of us. In this video, let us know the structure of eye with dissection. The structure of eye is same in all mammals with slight differences. So I took the goat eye for dissection. Observe the outer structure of goat eye. This is human eye. What we see externally as eye is only small portion. More complex and larger part of the eye is located in the eye socket of the skull. Only 1 by 6 portion of the eyeball is visible to her. The eye is protected from strong sunlight and dust by eyebrows, eyelashes and eyelids. Lacrimal glands are present in eyes. They secrete a watery liquid containing salts which helps in destroying the bacteria, keeping the eye moist and removing dust particles. In certain emotional states such as laughing and crying, this fluid flows in excess amounts what we call tears. Students, let us dissect the eye is the organ which gives the sense of sight and also acts as a window to the outside world. Observe the external parts, the sclera, the pupil, the iris. The pupil is rectangular shape in goat whereas it is round in humans. In the front portion of the eye, the sclerotic layer forms cornea, the protective layer. Eye is almost a spherical organ having three layers, one below the other. The outermost layer is sclerotic layer or sclera. The second or the middle layer is choroid layer. And the last innermost layer is called retina. This is the sensory region of the eye. In this dissection, you can observe each layer and its function. Students observe the outermost layer, the sclera. It is thick, tough, fibrous, non-elastic and white colored layer. In the front portion of the eye, the sclerotic layer forms cornea. The second layer is or the middle layer is choroid layer which has large number of blood vessels. These blood vessels carry blood to and from the eye. And the innermost layer or sensory region of the eye is retina. Retina detects the light and transforms the light energy into nerve impulses. Students observe the pink color structures. These are the muscles. The eyeball within the socket is moved with the help of these six muscles. Both the eyes move together in coordination with each other to make the vision perfect. With the help of these muscles, Ashita can move her eyes from right to left, left to right, top to bottom and bottom to top. Students observe the optic nerve which carries messages from eye to brain. There are two eyes and there are two optic nerves, one on each side. On its way to brain, half of the optic nerve of one side crosses to other side and other half travel on the same side. Thus, each eye sends its messages to the both sides of the brain. Due to this crossing over, optic chiasma is formed on the forebrain region. Students, let us observe the dissection. First, make a hole in the sclera region and cut it through the sclera. Students, observe the sclera. It is very hard to cut the sclera portion. Why? Because it is made up of tough, thick and fibrous non-elastic tissue. In the front portion of the eye, the sclerotic layer forms cornea. Cornea is the clean window in the sclera in front of the iris. It protects the eye from direct exposure to light. Students, do you know the crystalline lens is present in our eyeball? 
This lens divides the inner space of the eyeball as aqueous chamber and vitreous chamber. Aqueous chamber is filled with water like fluid whereas vitreous chamber is filled with jelly like fluid. Observe the jelly like fluid that is present in vitreous chamber. Observe the crystalline lens, the transparent lens in the vitreous chamber. And also observe the retina, the innermost layer, the blue colored layer. It carries messages from eye to brain. Students, I am trying to separate each and every part in the eye. First of all, separate the jelly-like fluid from vitreous chamber and the watery-like fluid in the aqueous chamber. I successfully separate the innermost layer retina. Students now observe the watery like fluid and the jelly like fluid. The jelly like fluid present in vitreous chamber and also observe the water like fluid present in aqueous chamber. Students observe the black color particles present in these fluids. These are the photoreceptor cells from the retina. There are two types of cells are present in retina. The first one are rods and second one are cones. Nearly 125 million of tiny rod cells are present in our eye. They contain a pigment called rhodopsin. They are special photoreceptor cells. Students, have you ever seen in dark nights? Rods have the capacity to sense even very dull light or dark nights, but they cannot distinguish one color from other. Nearly 7 million cone cells are present. They have contained the pigment called iodopsin. They distinguish the colors in brighter light. Students, I successfully separate the biconvex lens from the eye. It is an amazing real and natural biconvex lens. Students, now let us separate the remaining two layers, the choroid layer and the sclera. Observe the choroid layer. It is black in color. It contains lot of blood vessels. It encloses the eye except the part pupil. The part formed by the choroid layer around the pupil is iris. Radial and circular muscles are present in the iris. Students, by issuing identity cards like other, they take photographs of your eyes. Do you know why did they take photo of your eye? Why? Because iris patterns are individual specific and can be used for identification just as our fingerprints. Color of the eye is determined by the color of the iris. Iris has a pigment which gives black, brown and blue color to the eyes of individuals. Students clearly observe the hole that is called pupil present in the center of the iris. This pupil allows light to enter the inner chamber of the eye. The iris is a muscular structure which contains the radial and circular muscles to adjust the size of the pupil. In darkness, the pupil expands and the aperture becomes larger. This allows maximum amount of light to pass through the pupil. When the light is bright, the pupil contracts and the aperture becomes small in size so that less light passes through. Actions of iris and pupil are comparable to the action of diaphragm in a camera. Transparent dome shaped tissue that is cornea extends over the iris. This cornea is belongs to sclerotic layer. Let us separate the sclera, sclerotic layer from the choroid layer. Students observe that the both layers are attached together. I successfully separate the sclera from choroid layer. 
this is choroid layer and this is sclera or sclerotic layer this is outermost layer it is thick tough and fibrous and non elastic and white colored layer the sclera bulges and forms the cornea observe the transparent layer cornea it protects the eye from direct exposure to light and it allow light to pass inside the eye this is covered outside by thin transparent protective coat called conjunctiva whenever unwanted substances come in contact with this layer the lacrimal glands are stimulated to wash the substances out of the eye conjunctiva is protected and lubricated by the secretions of lacrimal glands students let us observe the innermost layer and the actual sensory part of the eye that is retina observe the point where the optic nerve is connected to the retina there are no rods and cones at this point so there is no vision at this point this point is called blind spot the real work in the retina is performed by light sensitive cells known as photoreceptors these photoreceptors consists of two different types of specialized cells the rods and the cones these cells differ in their structure composition and function rods have the capacity to sense even very dull light or dark nights but they cannot distinguish one color from other this is the reason why in dark nights all colors of an object appear to be the same in different tones of gray the cone cells are present in large numbers in the part retina which is just opposite to pupil This is the area of the best vision is called fovea or yellow spot or macula. Cones have different pigments they help us to distinguish different colors they function better in bright light. Students now you see the amazing part in our eyes that is the biconvex lens. Observe the artificial biconvex lens in this video. image in this artificial biconvex lens is upside down and also smaller than the object now observe the natural transparent and crystalline biconvex lens in the eye it is present immediately behind the pupil and it is attached to the ciliary muscles and suspensory ligaments by the action of ciliary muscles it changes its shape to focus light on the retina it becomes thinner to focus distant object and becomes thicker to focus nearby objects light traveling from an object passes through the cornea and pupil and is focused by the lens on to retina where an image of the object is formed image formed on the retina will be smaller than the object moreover the image is upside down optic nerve carries messages from retina to brain brain analyzed the messages and converted upside down image to upright position and restored normal size students please observe me in the biconvex lens of the eye It is amazing that I am looking inverted through this lens. Thus the function of the eye lens is similar to the man-made optic lens. The eye lens is held in position by ciliary muscles. Contraction and relaxation of these muscles changes the size, diameter and focusing of the lens. Because of this capacity we are able to see very far and very near objects very clearly without any delay. Students now observe the different parts separated in this section. The first part is sclera, the outermost layer. And the second one is choroid, second layer. This is biconvex lens present in the eye and this is jelly like fluid present in vitreous chamber and this is retina the innermost layer and this is optic nerve students i think that you got a clear idea about the structure of eye wait for next video with animation i will show the 
functioning of the eye and also diseases and defects of the eye and caring of the eye. Thank you.